Alright, so we got something a little different now. So, old William. William, look at my videos. Don't you say something in the comment section, old buddy, old pal. But, um, uh, I ain't going to give you the rundown of what went on. Uh, I know some people hate that. Um, but, we got check engine lights. Simply put, there's a heating circuit. Not a heating circuit. There's a uh, high voltage issue that we got going on. Let's see if I can cut this off. Uh, come on here. This is what it is. P0132 on this fancy high performance 2001 Acura Integra supercharge. No, it's not. But what it is, the um, upstream sensor is failing. He put two sensors on there, if I understand, uh, the upstream and downstream. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, we still got the code, and now it's here because he was like, screw it, don't want to deal with it no more. Now, uh, we're going to look at some PID data. So I'm just going to go to the generic portion here because this car is not that intelligent uh, as far as determining issues. But it is intelligent as far as letting you know what's wrong as far as putting you in a vicinity. But as far as like narrowing down specifically, you know, it's probably wiring related. You know, he put a sensor on there and it don't work. Ain't no telling. But that's why I was here. So we're going to get William squared away. Let's see. Let's see if we can zoom in on here. Right into live data. The freeze frame wasn't really of any assistance. And um, I just pretty much went into the live data here. And... It looked like the sensor was pretty much disconnected. Uh, that's the voltage value I had. Here it is right here. Uh, there's one and we're going to pull up two. Two works. So the upstream is what we're tackling. Bank one sensor one. Bank one sensor two is the one that's working. So that's going to be our our uh, standards of a working sensor. I'm going to, uh, so right now they're both operating like they're supposed to. They're not heated up it's not going to uh, produce any voltage value simply because it it needs to heat up that's why we have heaters on sensors before that pump start working so i want to start up let it warm up and we'll see number two start to operate and number one is going to stay the same now remind you this is the value of a uh, hooked up sensor and then we'll just go pretty much test from there So I'm going to tell you the symptoms that he was experiencing. Uh, so yeah, we got, so number one, bank one, sensor two is moving. Bank one is incapable of moving. So pretty much his symptoms uh, consist of just like a lack in the power. I mean, you try to accelerate, it feel like the time is just retarded. It doesn't want to go anywhere or do anything. It just falls on its face. And that's normal, especially when you don't have that primary sensor operating like it's supposed to. Simply put, I mean, the car doesn't know uh, how to micromanage the uh, timing or fuel. You know, it's going to go into pretty much a default mode. And um, that's why we pretty much get what we'll get as far as that falling on its face while trying to accelerate. So it's just pretty much, the voltage is pretty much out of specification. These sensors are supposed to oscillate from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 volts. And you'll see a, a, a sine wave, like an oscillating uh, waveform. But it, it ain't, it ain't going to do that. This bottom was going to, um, should not reflect the upstream. Just FYI, this should flatline the downstream sensor because of how the catalytic converter operates. Or the functionality of it. The upstream is going to, uh, like I said, it's going to oscillate. That's pretty much flat line. If we was to look on the graph, it'll just be straight at one, one point, one point two seven five volts. That's it. We change the graph there. Uh, I'll just that'll just slow it down. But it's just flat. We need to we need it to oscillate, and we're going to get on to that right now. Um, the, well, I'm going to try to access the wiring from the back, from the top here. 
So that sensor is not going to be in the front like any other regular vehicle. It's actually going to be between the firewall and the intake. And I'm just going to check the wiring here in the back. And uh, I'm not going to worry about the heater. That's just not my concern right now simply because the voltage, the check engine light's not on for that. We need to worry about the signal wire. And that's the white wire on the, from the wiring diagram, how that looks. That's what we're going to tackle. Keys on, engine off. Our uh, green and black wire here on the side is where we're going to check for our ground. It's going to be a little tight right here, so that's the wire there we're going to check. And I'm going to simply take my test light, put it on battery positive on the uh, alligator side. And I'm just going to check my test light here. It is illuminating. So this should illuminate on the ground side. And I'm just going to simply test my load there, which it is, which is perfectly fine. Now, when the voltage is high, the car just pretty much detected that it was over 0.9 volts and uh, for, for a, a sustained period of time. Now, the ground is supposed to um, loop with that resisting circuit there and drop that voltage value which it isn't so what we're going to do we're going to check the value on the white wire which is our signal wire and see if we have that 1.2725 or whatever value so that's our bias voltage there so when this bias voltage when everything is working appropriate like it's supposed to that resistor from that ground circuit is going to drop that voltage value which it isn't so we either were missing one or the other or the sensor is just simply defective if you follow me so I'm going to, I got my voltmeter here my black wire is grounded and I'm simply going to jump right onto that white wire if I can get to it without blocking the camera and see if we got our 1.275 or over 1 volt value and wow I got 11 volts I got battery voltage on that white wire it's not supposed to have that issue now there's a technical service bulletin stating that battery voltage could bleed into that signal wire and it seems like that's what we got let me go to my heating circuit and check for um, battery voltage also there should not be battery voltage on two wires or should not. Just gonna check all of these. Yep. So I got battery voltage on two wires there. So this black and white, I want to say, or black and yellow, is battery voltage that should be with my heating circuit. This this solid white wire here that should be my signal wire is going to uh, my signal that's why it went to that default value of 1.2 volts so what it is we got an interesting story here this we have a short something's causing the battery voltage to climb not supposed to be that high well it's not supposed to be that high period so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna load test that voltage going to our signal wire see what value that is see what if it actually illuminates so it doesn't and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you the scan tool because um, I want to see if I can pull that voltage down and I'm looking at the scan tool and I was actually able to, to achieve that so I got my uh, so technically my um, test light is grounded and that's acting as a resistor so uh, it's is uh, is actually able to pull that voltage down. So I wonder if there's some internal damage with the computer. And uh, so we'll, next step we're gonna have to do is go to the computer system and see if there's actually the uh, see if we got the value coming out of our signal wire that we do with our connector here. So if just to go back and reiterate, we have 11 volts here on our signal wire it's not supposed to be that it's supposed to be 1.25 volts 
our PCM, it once disconnected or that pin removed, should have only 1.25 volts. If we have the value coming out the computer that we have through here, our computer's bad. If we have, um, if we disconnect the computer and we still have this value, then that indicates that um, there's a problem with our wiring harness. So let's go to the computer. So I just want to show you the value that I got when I put my test light to the uh, bank one sensor one signal side there. I was actually able to drop the voltage value with my test light and there it is right there. So the test light is hooked up that's acting as though it's my sensor there and um, I'm dropping the voltage. And here's the thing, my test light has a uh, lower resistance value than that oxygen sensor because of how the circuit's designed. Now, I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to go to the computer and uh, we're going to test the voltage value and make sure that's not 11 volts coming out the PCM going to the signal wire. Alright, found the uh, got the computer out that's on the right side kick panel so on the passenger side you pull this panel panel off and you'll expose the computer and within that we're going to have to narrow down the wire and uh, found the pin out based on the wiring diagram which was C16 and um, I didn't know which one was A, B or C so I just pretty much did A, B, C or A, B, C it's either going to be one or the two and found the coordinates which was C16 and see if they matched the color and here it is over here now to even further narrow this down, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to check for the voltage for one. Remember we had 11 volts on that white wire. We'll hang this up right there and I'm going to put my ground with this alligator clip right there. And we're going to go picking. So if I'm right, we should have our voltage value. Of 11 that's 10 volts I'm just gonna check this one on the side here yeah that's not it so here's our voltage value here and even you know if I want to make certain what I could do being that I knew for a fact when I grounded the wire the signal wire with the test light it dropped the signal so I'm gonna do that to confirm so here we are on our signal Got my test light. I'm going to ground that out. And we're going to hit that same white wire with the test light. And yep, it dropped off. So we're on the white wire, correct wire. So two things. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this connector out. Remove that pin for that white wire and see if my PID data changes with this white wire disconnected. Uh, I think what I'm gonna have to do, I need to get a, maybe that's far as I need to go. There you go, okay. So put, let's put this back, we'll lock that back in place. Let's see how it responds. So that's out. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to that same, excuse me, go to that same pin out and see if it's producing 11 volts or not. So we have a voltage value of 0.396. Uh, if I look at the live data, that's reflective of that. So our PCM is fine. Here's our live data there. There's the sensor in question. Let's see if they get a focus. So we have a value, I'm going to remove it and it will go back up to 1.27 volts. So yeah, so what that indicates, because um, I know this is going to be a resistor inside of here uh, when testing the voltage. So that means the there's our, our wiring issue is going to be here in this wire. So let's check this wire and we should have 11, yep, so we got 10 volts now and everything is disconnected. So two things, we either need to find out where to short to uh short to how it is or simply just run a separate wire but i don't i don't mind i don't uh, i think we can do a wiggle test uh it seemed like it just go from obviously from here out to the 
uh, wire out there. I mean, it will just require separating the loom and uh, tracking down where it's coming from. So I think uh, what we could do, hmm, because my thing is it's, it's weird because it's biased voltage. It's not actual, it's not actual bi battery voltage. And that's the thing I'm not not understanding unless there's a fault with the sensor no because this signal wire just goes from here on out so likely there's a sensor pulling voltage from here uh, supplying voltage to this that's what that's what it seems like uh, that's interesting let me do some thinking so I'm slowly but surely making progress so I wound up putting the pin back in C16 and um, I decided to work my way up forward here because I know the issue is from there up to obviously the uh, sensor there and what I did was this I found that this sub harness from in the engine bay goes to the computer so this is the wire um, that potentially is supplying the voltage to the uh, short to positive. So if I remove this, if I can get this out of here. There it go. Our voltage dropped to six volts, uh, which is which is good. Uh, so I know it's on this with this is migrated with this somewhere so what I could do um, find that white wire and see if the white wire going to the computer which looked like this one right here is having it supplying that three volts that value once I put the test meter to it so let me do that and confirm that I'm on the appropriate wire and uh, we'll go from there I think I know what I'm going to do. It seemed like the technical service bulletin, bulletin was appropriate in what it described. It did say something along the lines of the fluid or, or condensation building up in the connector and causing some issues. My voltage value is 9.5. I'm not sure if that's because of the battery's low. Don't really care too much. But the voltage value does change when I move the harness. And it went from 9 to 6. Um, I also disconnected a connector up there, it dropped the voltage, and I still wound up moving the connector, the voltage value started changing. And I got it as low as 4 volts. So I'm going to show you if I can use one hand here. So it, it might be... Yeah, it might be in this connector here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the harness a loose, bring that up so I have a lot more room to work with, and then we'll start pulling it apart and see what we find out. All right, all right. So I, mean, I guess I'm in a little too deep right now, so to turn back, I don't plan on turning back because we don't give up around here. We're going to figure it out. So what's happening, I got the wire harness pulled out, and it's laying on top, so everything that was um, tucked underneath that you wouldn't see is um superimposed i guess so that's that's what we got i'm going to now that i have everything exposed and laid out um the voltage now is about 5.2 and once i start moving this harness around the voltage started changing so our issue is likely going to lie in this joint here with the O2 sensor. So I'm going to start cutting away and exposing the wires and then I'll be able to separate them and then we'll be able to look even further of uh, what's going on because every time I start moving it I mean the voltage change so I mean this is a good indication that you know we're right in that area so hopefully hopefully we'll see it. We'll see what happened. I want to say you really want to make sure you got a good connection because you go fishing around and your connectors start wiggling loose you know it's a possibility that it'll point you in the wrong direction so I gotta make sure my connections 
connections are tight here. Let's see what we can do. A test light hooked up here. Now I could use my power probe. It's just this is more accessible for the moment. And I don't feel like having to hook all that stuff up. Let me test this. Yeah, we're working. All right, let's see which one changes the value. Because we know for a fact we're not, this doesn't go to the computer, the PCM. There you go. So I found it. This one right here, this wire. Here's our wire. This is this yellow and red wire. Uh oh. <laughs> I done took. Pierced the hell out of that thing. Okay, so it's this black and yellow here. Here's our culprit. This is not the wire that goes to our. Uh, our signal wire because our signal wire is white so whatever this wire is whatever this wire goes to is is our problem and what I could do is a test our here actually here look at this this wire is a part of our heating circuit let me go to this wire right here and see if it produces a voltage value you know what look at that it's actually reflective of our value on our signal wire. Yeah, wow. So, was it? It was damn close. So, yeah, it looked like it was close to the value. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, could it be inside the connector? Let me do this. Let me put. Let me make sure we're on the right one. I'm gonna put voltage through this black and yellow wire, like I did before, and we'll see it change. And then we're gonna probably go into that connector. Oh shit! I'm gonna probe myself. I know I tore up the wire. Don't be mad at me. So yeah. All right. So that's the wire that go to our heating circuit. So what I'm gonna do. I'm going to remove that pin because it might just be in the connector here. And uh, let's do that. Let's take that out. The connector just may be defective. But that's crazy though. Why would it, how could it? I'm going to separate our signal wire from in here. And see if it... Again. So I'm going to put the voltmeter back in there and we're going to supply the voltage again to that heater wire. So we got 3 point, point 0.3, so we got 300 millivolts there. Nothing happens. That's crazy. That's crazy. The housing, could the housing, the connector housing be shorted out? Unless the liquid in here is producing, is a conductor, because I mean they're obviously separated. They're not even connected. That is amazing. Oh wow. Then we're going to test it again. We're on the appropriate wire. Send 12 volts through the heater wire. Now it isn't doing it. Let me make sure I'm, yeah, I'm connected. It's crazy. So I'm going to clean this connector up really good. And, uh,
get all the oil off of it because I guess the oil is called is being the conductor and causing those two wires to uh, pull it pull the voltage up and, and you know and it doesn't take much I mean you saw when I was the resistor I was able to bring that voltage value up so let me clean this connector off with brake cleaner really good and get it dried up and then we'll recheck it Alright, after cleaning the connector, the voltage value is significantly reduced. Uh, we got close to what we would have if we connect the digital voltmeter to the connector. It dropped it at the PCM to about uh, 300 millivolts. Now we got 500. And I, I guess what was happening, like the TSB said, I mean, the oil was just a conductor inside the connector here. Um, that The connector, the sub harness is connected to the main over on the driver side there and this is what we got so I have do have 12 volts going through it and before it was higher than that so I'm gonna move some wires around see what happens and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do I'm gonna clean the rest of this with brake cleaner and uh, get everything back installed and we should have a normal functioning oxygen sensor but this is crazy so the voltage actually did not the voltage but the fluid actually did be, likely became a conductor develop the coating on there after years of accumulation and that's what was able to draw the voltage up higher I mean even then like I was showing you when I have my hand connected here I can be the resistor and I can change the state of voltage like right now it's connected if I was to grab the um, signaling in and then put myself on positive voltage it'll increase see I'm a conductor so that's the uh, it's that's interesting. Simply put, because you know nobody would ever think that the oil coating on here would be a conductor and cause all this commotion. The check engine light would just straight up just illuminate automatically off the bat. We saw the high voltage in there. Um, well, I'm gonna get this put back together. This voltage should drop once we connect the oxygen sensor. This is a resistor inside of there, and it'll lower the voltage, and then we'll have a normal working oxygen sensor. So let me get all this cleaned up, get it back, taped up, and we'll look at the values. All right, everything's uh, taped up back together. Um, I didn't put the insulation like it was before on there. This should just be perfectly fine. Uh, this is, should be a little bit more lax, but I, I think we'll be good with this. Anything can always be a lot better, but simply put, I'm gonna run this back through the bottom the battery is disconnected because I don't want that alternator battery wire hitting anything making a mess so I'm gonna get this back down through here and um, we'll see what, what our values are looking like first test failed and the sensor isn't working on the first test so I do have a spare oxygen sensor laying around and it I'm gonna install that so what happened lightly whatever uh, whatever was going on with that sensor I think he probably did buy it online don't know yet but that sensor is not working I'm gonna put another sensor in there and uh, we're going to check that and see how that works out. So likely the signal side has potentially failed uh, because of, uh, I, I'd, I'd imagine what happened. But it was biased voltage. Maybe, maybe not. More than likely no. But I'm going to change the sensor anyway and then retest the values in the computer system. Because initially they stay at the same value and it didn't change once the exhaust system heated up and the downstream went into a closed loop. Here's attempt two. The uh, first sensor failed. So we're going to look at the live. Oh shit. Oh, it's going up live, man. So we're gonna, oh, look. We got action now. Yeah, we got activity now. That's good. This is awesome. This is awesome. So 
there was probably a couple of different things that as to why the original sensor that was in there that failed with the wiring issue but we got movement now which is awesome the car idles a lot better too which is completely noticeable so our uh, bank one sensor two sensors starting to decline now and fall off and lean out as everything heats up and goes in the closed loop and uh, our bank one sensor one is starting to begin to oscillate which is awesome so this issue is totally fixed I'm gonna let the car do its thing and uh, get everything buttoned up and take it on a test drive alright just got back off the test drive everything worked out just fine there was no issues and I'm gonna show you i uh, prove that to you right now if I can get this glare off the screen so there's no codes present let's go here let's see if there's any codes which there shouldn't be no fault codes now again that code will come back up immediately we're going to check incomplete monitor readiness and we're going to check those oxygen sensors they pass with flying colors so this issue is totally fixed now I know you probably may be thinking that you know I put a new sensor on it and that did fix the problem but you still have to you fail to realize like this vehicle utilizes the resistance value uh, as far as the oxygen sensor signal and that that is a very fragile system that's why it's, it's uh, insulated if you saw that that ground wire um, string along with it that insulation is prevent noise once it starts detecting noise then it's going to get obscure readings that's why it's important to have that insulation and that's why that bias voltage even though it wasn't enough to illuminate a light was enough to influence the readings so that was very interesting so yes the new sensor fixed it um, and but you have to take in consideration also how this the, how the uh, sensor uh, operates um, but yeah the brake cleaner I've <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm like perturbed. I'm at a loss of words. It was, that's what, I am very like like enthused about just what was happening. But I mean, it, I'm I've never had a vehicle have a short to ground in that fashion. Not a short to ground, but a short to um, hot in that fashion to where the oil was the conductor and causes caused the obscure reading. Of the sensor which was causing check engine light to just illuminate but like I showed you in the video you could be the resistor in uh, that circuit and change the readings of the oxygen sensor I've used that when I had to diagnose oxygen sensors on in past cases that I didn't document but just like that you saw it so and this was man this took a couple hours to figure out and fix so uh, this was all in one day just in case you didn't know but brake cleaner cleaned it, it fixed it, and no more codes. So I learned something new. This is the first time that ever happened. Normally you get like a short to ground. Um, and, you know, you go looking for a broken wire or something, but not that. That's rare. So I'm, wow, pat myself on the back, right? But we'll see what happens. Um, I'm, uh, gosh. Oh, yeah, that was another thing. Hold on. While I was under the car where the uh, upstream sensor go I found this hanging there so I'm not sure if uh, I don't know I don't know what happened maybe somebody tried to steal the converter a long time ago and ripped out the exhaust system I don't know and I, I guess I'll let the owner know about this also but I'm not sure if that had any type of influence on the sensor being damaged but there was a lot of oil in there and that oil obviously became a conductor less likely this was the was uh, anything pertaining to what happened uh, simply because this was in its bracket and if you pull and break the wires or however this was had a universal sensor on there is probably you know probably irrelevant but thought I mentioned but other than that the car's fixed it's running I'm done for the day but if anything else happened I'll let you know but hit that link subscribe to the channel stay informed have that reassurance of my work see you on the next one